Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I'm going to be doing my final thoughts and review on the Lucid Dreaming, Lucid Living deck. And, you know, based on my own personal experiences and what I think so far of this deck going forward. Let me just say right out of the gate that I do think that this is such a deep and in-depth deck that working with it for four weeks or six weeks is just not going to cut it. So this is a very limited review truly because I mean I can tell you my experiences thus far and you know tell you more about the deck in general and what kind of things you're going to get out of it but really there is so much to learn in this. It's like a kit, really, honestly. It's like a it's like a course, you know? It so first of all, <clears throat> I do think that this is something that I'm gonna be using for a long time to come. Because one of the aims that I wanna learn in my dream work is lucid dreaming. I have talked about this before and I am, I feel like very experienced dreamer and a very vivid dreamer. And I have explored other worlds and I have met other beings and I have time traveled and I have seen past life memories and um, had spirit communications and I believe deity uh you know, communications and messages from the cosmos and all number of things. I've done Inception a few times where it's a dream within a dream. You know, you wake up and you're still dreaming, that kind of thing. And even saying in the dream that you just dreamed this and it was from another dream that you had dreamed. It's just amazing, right? The dreamscape is amazing. And it's like, space and it's like the oceans there's so much to explore so this is why dream work is so important to me and one of the areas of dreaming that I am a complete beginner because I don't have much experience and that is lucid dreaming I swear my dreams are so intense it's I mean even when I'm flying and I'm talking with past loved ones, although that has now made me realize those are the ones that I recognize more sometimes of when I am actually in the dream state. But they're so intense. Like the dream that I had just last night, I was in some sort of uh, town or village or something. And there was this giant, at first people thought it was a tornado. But it was a giant that was causing havoc on the earth. And there was another giant. And this giant looked like a monster. I mean, it. this uh, giant, he had like claws. And, you know, if you could think of like the, I don't know, fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. You know, like a big troll kind of giant and he was wreaking havoc in our area and it was like a tornado right he was like picking up houses and they were throwing all over the place and then and this was a big giant let me tell you it was huge and then there was another giant on the other side of town that was going after the other giant to subdue him and he looked just like a regular clean cut human being, but he was just massive. So it was almost like the good guy and the bad guy. But then, 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 they had played something like the government or the powers that be, whoever it was that was in control of the dream said, you know, that they were, and you could see it, they were putting like a film over all the people so that all the people would be, they would not realize that it was giants, that it, they thought it was more like weather coming through, you know, like, like tornadoes had hit and they changed like the channel or 
they said like the weather, you know, tornadoes hit such and such and such when it was really giants that were doing this kind of um, terrorizing. But they were able to put a blanket uh, thing across it. And there was a few of us, my friends that were in this village with me. And they're like, I still remember. Do you still remember? Everybody's like, yeah, I still remember. That's the kind of dreams I'm talking about, right? I mean, like, where the hell did that come from? I'm not watching anything about giants or anything like that. <clears throat> Although I have had other dreams with giants and egregores and them controlling our matrix and all that good stuff. Maybe that's just because those are the kind of things that influence me. Those are the kind of things I think about sometimes, right? So anyways, um... This particular deck, I wanted to talk about um, the things that they talk about in here, about the different, uh, the three different perspectives on lucid dreaming. And I think that this is important. So let me, oh, and let me also say that I have done a complete and thorough walkthrough already on my channel. I'll be putting a link down below so that you can watch that because I'm not going to be doing, I mean, I might actually just briefly, just because this walkthrough will show you all the different areas or topics that are talked about in this particular deck. But um, if you want to see a good thorough showing all of the spreads and all that, I highly recommend going and checking that out. And I'll put that down below as well as I have shown some of the spreads that I did in my October reflections, you know, my tarot practice in October, and it shows some of my spreads that I've done with this. <clears throat> but I do want to read this to you because this will give you a little bit of perspective into what this particular deck, the different perspectives of it. There are several lenses through which to view lucid dreaming and the practice of becoming conscious within your dreams. Here we'll explore three of these, the spiritual, the scientific, and the psychological. The spiritual or esoteric lens focuses on the use of lucid dreaming as a tool for self-realization and enlightenment. Many traditions like Tibetan dream yoga, Hindu tantric sutras, and medieval hermetic magic all contain themes of lucid dreaming as a key element for realizing the illusor illusory nature of all reality. From this perspective, lucid dreaming is a tool to explore and navigate through multiple dimensions, astral planes, and levels of existence to which we normally don't have access within our baseline consciousness. By becoming aware that you are dreaming within a dream, you cultivate a questioning attitude towards all of reality. Just as a dream feels so re real when you are in it, so too everyday life can have the weight of ultimate reality and yet be ephemeral as the dream state. Eventually, this leads you into a new experience of ultimate reality. When you dream with lucidity, you end up freeing yourself from attachments in both the dream world and ordinary reality. Thus, you do away with long-held perceptual ruts. Lucid dreaming, viewed through a spiritual lens, is indeed a profound tool for self-realization. Then we get into the scientific lens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, dealing with a cold here, guys, so pardon me if I sneeze or cough. I'm, I'm trying to get them all out of um, the video, but a few might sneak in there. So, scientific lens. You can also view lucid dreaming from a scientific perspective. From this viewpoint, you can marvel at the recent scientific breakthroughs in laboratory studies that included participants who were skilled lucid dreamers. For many years, lucid dreaming was thought to be scientifically impossible because it was assumed that you could not turn on the cognitive questioning part of your brain that is normally shut down during REM, rapid eye movement, sleep. Through the pioneering work of Stephen LaBerge and others, researchers have proven that lucid dreaming is not only possible, but may hold the key to understanding the elusive makeup of consciousness itself. 
Recently, many more studies have been done that confirm the beneficial memory strengthening powers of lucid dreams and how lucid dreamers can even acquire new skills in waking reality when practicing those techniques in the dream time. Many great scientific leaders, Albert Einstein, for instance, credit their breakthroughs to their ability to go into the dream time and seek answers to their biggest quandaries. When viewed through the scientific lens, lucid dreaming offers the practical benefits of increasing brain functionality, reducing stress levels, and improving overall health. Now the psychological lens. The third lens through which to view lucid dreaming is psychological. Many psychologists have been fascinated by the dream time and the copious amount of content from the subconscious that it provides. Carl Jung, one of the founders of modern depth psychology, centered much of his methodology around interpreting and exploring the dream time. Nightmares and recurring dreams provide a clue about traumas that may still be affecting your daily life subconsciously. Furthermore, lucid dreaming is a bridge that can bring you into direct conversation with your deep unconscious and things that may be hard to access in other ways. In the lucid state, you can experiment with different states of consciousness interacting with one another, perhaps having a conversation with your inner child, or perhaps creating a safe room within your dream space to explore past memories. You can even rewrite traumatic situations within a lucid dream because you have a level of agency and safety there that you may not have been, may not have had in waking reality. No matter how you decide to view lucid dreaming, you can see that the benefits of all three of these perspectives are numerous. Pick one or choose to adopt all three. If you tend to be a person who takes a more scientific approach and is skeptical of the esoteric, utilize this deck for that perspective. If you yawn at the science but are striving towards spiritual realization, engage with the deck in that way. The beauty of lucid dreaming is that no matter how you slice it, at its core, you will find personal empowerment. With lucidity, you engage with hidden parts of yourself and explore liminal realms without depending on external authority figures or psychoactive substances. So then it goes on talking about how to connect with the dream time. And the first part is remembering your dreams. And they talk about keeping a dream log, right? And um, the dream time is subjective. Fear of the dream time, your brain makes reality, which I definitely believe. So let me move this aside and show you the different cards that we have. see if I can get closer. Okay, that's good enough. So the three different categories that we have are the black, white, and starry night. So the black cards right here, these are our lucid dream journeys. Lucid Dream Journeys are the first group of cards numbered 1 through 22. The artwork of these cards is set against a black background. These cards usher you through the various teachings that you encounter during lucid dreaming. Viewed in order, they outline the stages and natural progression that you pass through as a lucid dreamer. However, just as the dream realms don't unfold in accordance with linear time, these cards do not need to be encountered in order. As you draw cards from this group, you will be intuitively directed to the messages that you need for the appropriate stage in your journey. The topics covered within this group of cards range from beginner to advanced lucid dreaming practices. Therefore, you will learn with the lucid dreaming stages that you are currently experiencing and also get acquainted with the ones that are yet to come. These cards give you many tools with which to travel through the varying landscapes of lucidity successfully. Then we've got the state check uh, white card, stabilizing and reality shifting. So within these groups, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what it says. The cards number 23 through 33 are the state check stabilizing and reality shifting cards. The artwork in them is set against a white background. 
Here you will find the practical information and tools needed to perform the waking practices for lucid dreaming and to attain lucidity regularly. A state check is an action that you conduct during the day to check what state or reality you are in, dreaming awake or out of body. The teachings for these cards outline state checks that are popular among lucid dreamers. Learning how to perform them during the day is foundational to successful lucid dreaming. As you learn and carry out these various state checks, you will naturally find the ones that work best for you. The stabilizing cards teach you how to stabilize and prolong your lucid dreaming experiences. The teachings in these cards will help you to grow more skillful in maintaining these states uh, without being captured or catapulted out of your dream state prematurely. Now, I will say in the, the um, lucidity uh, dreams that I've had, the lucid dreams that I've had, I do feel like they are very short-lived. It's not easy to maintain a level of lucidity in my dreams for whatever reason. Um, the reality shifting cards teach you various techniques for remaining conscious while crossing over from the waking state to the dream state. These take practice and range from beginner to advanced methods. If you are struggling to become lucid or stay lucid, study these cards closely for practices that can assist you in that effort. And then we've got the last category here. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, let me take a drink really quick. These are the Starry Night cards, guides and guardians. And it says the cards numbered 34 through 44 are your guides and guardians. The artwork of these cards is set against a background of a starry night sky. These cards relate to the archetypal energies that you encounter in lucid dreaming. As you work with them, you learn how to engage with specific archetypes, beings, and energetic configurations in the lucid realms. You can develop a strong relationship with these particular guides who will then assist you in your progress in the dream time. Just as you encounter these guides and guardians in lucid dreams, you also come in, in contact with people and situations that embody different archetypes in your waking reality. These cards offer guidance on how to use the lessons gathered in the lucid realms to better deal with the people in your life who represent the same energetic configurations. The beings that you meet in the dream time are often uh, subconscious aspects of yourself that you are being called to remember and integrate. I think that that's a possibility, but I don't think that that's always a rule of thumb, in my opinion. <clears throat> so, just to show you the first set, these are like the lessons, right? Dream recall. Dream signs, so like symbols and signs. Uh, levels of lucidity, there's different levels of it. Recurring dreams. Desire Fulfillment, Nightmare Rewrite, Portals, that was weird, The Void, Dream World Home Base, Gaining Mastery, Sleep On It, False Awakening, Sleep Paralysis, Centered Power, By Location, The Three Worlds, The Initiate, Dream Body, The Six Realms, Dreams of Power, Dream Yoga, and Awake. These are the different lessons. These are the different state checks. So these are things that you do during the day and test yourself out several times throughout the day. And then it becomes like a habit so that when you're dreaming, you test these out also. And then you it makes you realize that you're dreaming, but also helps you to some of these and some might work for you and some might not help you to maintain a longer lucidity in your dreams so that it doesn't spiral out really fast. Hand signals, flying, a light switch, digital interface, solid structure, spinning, 
questioning mind, pointed focus, dream incubation, lifting off, and maintaining consciousness. <laughs> maintaining consciousness. And then these are the guides, the guardians and guides. Cosmic Self and Inner Child, Co-Author, Dream Characters, Dominators, Animal Guides, Mythic Sages, Mother of Dreaming, Ghosts, Beloved, Practicing Death, and Celestial Guides. Okay, so I wanted to show you the structure and um, talk about the different um, perspectives of how to use this deck. Because I think that those were important in understanding um, how this the structure is set up for this deck. So, let me just say, with working with this deck, it is not anything that is a short-term thing. You have to really be invested when using this deck. So unless you are truly invested in wanting to uh, become a lucid dreamer, you know, it is not like a walk in the park. It's not an easy fix. It's something you really have to work at. And this system really shows that. It gives insight into many of the different lessons and the levels. Now, I don't know. Like it said, they have taken, they have compiled information from um, probably many other like clinical trials of people that are lucid dreamers, compiling information about the different levels for themselves, not to mention the people themselves, their dreams, because I know that in this book, one of the things that I love about the book, I mean, I love a lot of things, but one of the things that I love about the book is that almost all of these give examples from the creator, the writers, on their actual dreams, you know, and their dreams are outstanding. I mean, they give you goosebumps. They're so frigging good. However, I think... When I am seeing some of those, hearing some of those, uh, and I have not read through all of them, but when I'm, when I am seeing some of them that I have come across, it almost feels like there's usually more of a psychological, um, or more clinical explanation to why that could be happening, and maybe that's part of the awareness that comes in the waking state. But honestly, and I've said this before in the previous um, review that I did on the mystical dream tarot, I do not believe that that is what all the dream state is. And I know that they've said that, they, they touch on it, but even the fact that she says that she believes that these are all portions of you that have made that up in your dream state, like the guides and stuff, right? I don't believe that. Do I believe that that can happen? Absolutely. But I know that I've had contact with other beings that were, I don't know. I And don't ask me how I know because I don't know how I know. I just know, right? I think that's another part that comes from being a psychic dreamer. Somebody that writes down their dreams, puts the dates down, then it comes true, and then you can go back and check on it. And know that it, at the time that you dreamt it, there was nothing that could even indicate anything like that happening. And then after the fact, then you're like, wow, I was tapping into some, I had to have been tapping into something beyond myself, right? Something that I wouldn't know. Yes, higher self. And maybe it comes with that concept of um, we're all connected, right? We're all one. So like this whole whole reality of life itself, everyone that you come across is really just you. Mm, I don't know as if I see it that way. I don't know as if I believe that. I believe that perhaps they are 
like a reflection for us to learn from if that's what we put in our I just think that it's not so cut and dry. I think it comes down to personal beliefs rather than going into a big old story on my belief system. However, I do think that this is a great tool, something that you've got to work at. This is not a walk in the park kind of thing. These are deep and detailed and, you know, it is, I think, a lot of work. A lot of work in order to be, unless you're naturally a lucid dreamer. And the majority of people I know have had lucid dreams, but they're not avid lucid dreamers. So it is something that I'm going to continue to do. I think it's excellent. I love that um, they have, like, well, and see, here's here's other things that, have made me wonder about this. And not that it's good or bad. It's just made me wonder. So like, let me see if I can show some of them to you. Um, like, first of all, avoid. I have never, ever dreamt of avoid, ever, that I remember, okay? That I remember, and that's key, I'm sure. Um, portals, yes, I have dreamt of many portals, and the way that it was depicted in here is a little bit different than the way I have experienced portals, and that's okay, because we're all different, right? That's cool. Um, another one is the sleep paralysis, and the way that it is talked about in this I think it feels more like um, the clinical, you know, how they say that it's just because of your REM sleep and because your your body shuts down, like the movement. It's like when you're waking up um, before you're done dreaming out of the, the REM state. And so it's just more, it feels more clinical or more psychological than it truly does sometimes spiritual. Because personally, I have had a lot of sleep paralysis in my life, especially when I was younger. And it used to scare the living crap out of me, okay? And then as I was a young adult, I read a lot of Sylvia Brown's books, and I've talked about this before. And she said what sleep paralysis is, is your body is starting to wake up before your spirit is all the way back into your body at, because you've been astral traveling, right? So that out-of-body experience as you're moving back into your body, it's kind of like catching you so your body stays still, but it feels like a foreign object is trying to catch you. But once you realize, and they do talk about it in the book about the fear and stuff like that, but once I realized that's what it was, I no longer feared it. And it stopped happening. I've had it a few times, but when it happened, I just, awareness came in, and maybe that's also part of lucid dreaming, you know, the lucidity of awareness, right? But once I understood that that's what it was, I no longer had fear, and it would move through the, through the phase, like, really quickly. And then I stopped having them all together. Um, I know that other people have talked about actually having something like sitting on their chest and stuff like that. And, you know, like other beings that are there. I believe that is definitely a thing also. I don't think that that's all figments of our imagination. And I'm not saying that she does either, but, or the, the writers of this, but it did not feel exactly the same way as what I see it. You know, and that's okay because I, this is not my deck. I didn't create this deck. I feel like there is a lot to learn because I am not an experienced uh, lucid dreamer. And if these are things that are compiled from a lot of other lucid dreamers, not just the people that write this, but other lucid dreamers on what they've experienced, perfect. But there were other things that got me, like um, levels of lucidity. She talks about the different levels of 
you know, moving into the lucid dream, like the beginning stage and then being able to prolong it longer. And um, also the another part is like the desire fulfillment. So that's like the beginning stage of, lu of lucidity, which that's what I have pretty much experienced in my lucid dreaming other than just this last one. But um, I would start decorating. One of the times I had Joanna Gaines come over to my house, I'm like, hey, Joanna, you know, and we started decorating. But it was like instantly, okay, let's change the color of that couch. Let's see. And so I was decorating in my dream and I knew I was dreaming. That's why I had the ability to just go, oh, let's try here. Let's try this color swatch. The first time that I remembered it, I was painting on a canvas, but that canvas was um, like a fence. And I was like, oh my gosh, look, I'm dreaming. Look at what I can do. And that's what I started doing. So that part makes complete sense to me, the desire fulfillment. Um, rewrite, I think that's really cool that if you are somebody that's had a lot of like recurring dreams, especially nightmares, um, perhaps it is something that is unfinished that you have to face more or less. And rewriting those kind of things can actually help free you right? Portals. Yep. That's good. There was another one. Um, the dream body talks about several different kinds of dream bodies that we have. Mm, how do we know? That's the thing. How do you know? How do they know that every single person has the same dream bodies? That's the part that kind of gets me a little bit. Is this a compilation of all the different people and their experiences or is this one person's experience of the dream body you know because oh, let me let me grab this one out really quick for you dream body what was that 18 because it came across in one of my dreams um one of my readings so the dreamer approaches a larger-than-life dream body. He has been diligently cultivating and building up the presence of his etheric body through lucid dreaming and out-of-body experiences. Now this vehicle of light is ready to transport him to extraordinary places. So for me, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a seasoned lucid dreamer. Obviously, this is one of the reasons I wanted to use this dream kit, or, you know, Oracle. But... The dreams that I have had, I can either see my hands. I've actually looked in the mirror and seen myself, my reflection, although it did look a little bit different. I've also seen my reflection as a different person completely, entirely. I have, um, it's like normally my dreams go back and forth from like being in my body, being just outside of my body, and being clear up like a bird's eye view. And it goes back and forth. Um, I don't think I've ever, that I remember, seen my body as in like a light. I don't think so. But it says, as you continue with lucid dreaming, and especially with out-of-body experiences, you will discover that you have a dream body, a second body that becomes as intimately known and tangible to you as your physical body. The second body has to grow and develop just like your physical body. And just as each person's physical body is unique, so your dream body will, you, will be particular to you. Initially, you may perceive your dream body as just a faint, glowing, transparent outline of a form. Never. I have never, ever experienced that. Eventually, and, and that's not to say that somebody else hasn't. I'm just saying me personally. <clears throat> eventually it will grow to be more solid it's always been solid um it would be too simplistic and inaccurate to reduce this body to just a figment of your imagination or to your brain constructing a false body image when you repeatedly authentically feel and visit your dream body you realize that it is just as real as your waking body as I've engaged with out-of-body experiences, I've been amazed to watch my own dream body literally develop and grow its parts. And then it goes on to talk about personal experiences. But it says, Tantric tradition, traditions recognize seven distinctive dream bodies developed on the path to enlightenment. The physical, the etheric, the astral, the mental, the spiritual, the cosmic, and the nirvanic. In the lucid dreamer, 
Goodwin explains these seven bodies and what each one experiences within the dream realm. Physical dream body, the body that seeks out pleasure, as you learned from the desire fulfillment card, a whole phase of lucid dreaming is centered on seeking out and fulfilling your desires. Even when not lucid, many of our dreams can center on satisfying cravings. Okay, that is another thing. I mean, I've had very little, unfortunately, very little sex dreams. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> Etheric dream body. The body traditionally experienced in OBEs, out-of-body experiences. Astral dream body. This body can move through the collective unconscious and the past. It is often seen as interchangeable with the etheric body. Mental dream body. This body can move to the past as well as the future. You need to develop a high level of integrity before entering this dream body because it can manifest whatever it wants into physical form. That is why it is so important to release attachments to desires and fears before entering this dream body. And then we've got spiritual dream body. This body can enter eternity outside of time. In this body, there is no distinctions between dream and reality. And then there's the cosmic dream body. This body dreams of the infinite cosmic realms. Here, matter and mind have become one and exist in a realm of light. And then there's the nirvanic dream body. This is the body of the enlightened being. In this state, one dreams of nothingness and is immersed in a non-duality where only the present moment exists. I definitely never experienced that either. I'd like to, but now the cosmic dream body... I feel like I have had, like, although I feel like I was still in my body, but that I've gotten messages from the cosm cosmos, you know, like planets were speaking to me or like the dark matter was speaking to me and giving me messages. But so that's just another, another thing that kind of, how do you know? How do they really know what these bodies are? And I know that that was like different teachings and stuff. That's what kind of throws me off a little bit. And then six different realms. So without going into even greater detail, because this is already long as it is, the deck is excellent, okay? There is so much to be learned from this deck, so many different things to explore, different um, things that you can do in order to uh, start recognizing when you're dreaming. But even like some of the things that were talked about in here, like these other dream characters and stuff, that's really, really cool. But I do believe like, past loved ones when they come to me I believe it truly is my past loved ones coming to me why do I feel like this I feel this way because of my experience with my predictive dreams that is like my proof and I know that they're different but that is like the proof that it's not just about what's happening right now those are not the only influences. I believe that we dream so much and sleep so much, even if we're not remembering the dreams, because that is a crucial part of our spiritual evolution. It's all part of it. So the deck is friggin' awesome. It's very detailed. It's going to take a long time to get through it. So if this is something that you're in for the long haul, this is the perfect deck for you to explore. But this is really about becoming lucid. Whereas it's not your run-of-the-mill, like, helping you to interpret your dreams kind of thing. That's one thing that I have discovered. It can help like that, but this is more about a whole you could create a whole practice just in going through and trying to do every single one of these things. This is this deck has kind of thrown me off just a little bit because I have such little experience with lucidity. But I'm excited about that because 
Even during this process, and I have had very few and far between lucid dreams, I did have a lucid dream. Granted, it was a loved one, and it is, you know, that time of the year where the, the veil is thinner, and I'm also doing ancestry work. It could be a coincidence that it all happened all around the same time, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's because I am doing the work, and I was able to get one lucid dream out of this thus far. You might not. Don't expect within four weeks or two weeks or, you know, doing a few spreads that that's going to happen. It is a work in progress, but I think this is an excellent deck for it. So I do like it. Um, the card stock, this one is warping on me. It warped, but I think that's Michigan weather. I don't think that there's any way around it. You can really see it in one. See how that's warped. But it's a cool deck. The artwork is friggin' awesome. It's very cosmic. I love that. Very dream, dreamy. The, the book is friggin' amazing. The quality of the deck is really good. The box is good. It will fit nicely on your bookshelves. Everything. So I hope you have enjoyed this. I know I am very wordy. But when it comes to dream work, it is so important to me. So... Thank you for spending this time with me. If you if you have liked this video, please be so kind to give me a thumbs up so that the algorithm uh, sends it out to other people because, you know, you're saying that you like it, right? And if you haven't subscribed and you're into, you know, tarot and astrology and oracle and digital planning and all of that good stuff, then you know, maybe hit that subscribe button and stick around for a while. And I appreciate you being here with me and I'm sending you love always.